So good morning from Glencoe. Uh, I'm back here again, which is quite nice to get back to the home ground. And today, um, what I'm gonna do is something a little bit different is because a few weeks ago, I had a client out and we was doing a shoot and it's kind of a classic shot. Um, and I'm gonna show you the picture in a second there. But it was kind of a dark, dull day and there weren't much happening. So we kind of adjusted our shots a little bit. And while we were waiting for the light, I managed to get a shot myself. Uh, what I did is I did like a really long exposure. So two minutes exposure and it worked out really good. And it got me thinking, yeah, it's black and white, slow exposure. This actually might be something worth having a look at around the Glen at some of the honey pots. So what I'm going to do is today I'm going to try and do a little bit of fine art photography to some extent. And uh, let's see if we can get some real sort of black and white beautiful images with a fine art style. So come and join me. How you doing? Yeah, that was a great shot, weren't it? I loved it, it really nice. And it really did get me thinking about black and white images around this area this time of year. Uh, we're at the start of April and the problem is with Glencoe and all the Scottish Highlands really is the vegetation's really not very vivid at this time of year. Everything's kind of a dull, washed out brown. The heather itself is a dark brown, decomposed brown. So the bracken's not growing yet, so it's too early. So you're kind of talking sort of June before the colours start going that vivid green that we quite familiarly get in the summer. So there's a little bit of a lull here and this is a good opportunity to explore a bit of black and white. Now today um, we've got a storm coming in, so it's very windy. This is called Storm Catherine apparently. So it's quite a windy day, but I'm going to use that to my advantage because the clouds are coming over the sky here. They're moving really fast and that's going to allow me to really slow it down and get you that lovely softness in the sky, which is quite nice. It's a bit flat, the light's a bit flat, but that again, for black and white and for fine art, is pretty much what you want. So I'm quite happy with these conditions. It's a good example where sometimes you've got, right, I'm going out today and the conditions are just not what you want. And you've just got to think outside the box a bit. I'm an eternal optimist. Everybody says, oh, I'm always optimistic. I am an eternal optimist. I think you can always find something, even in some of the most tragic conditions. Um, but today, yeah, a bit windy, so the drone might be a bit wobbly. Cool, okay, I'm gonna head up this way, up the West Island Way, and we're gonna go and find the cauldron. Well, there you go, best laid plans of mice and men. I could come over and I could hear this torrent and I thought, oh, there's gonna to be too much water in this and I'm right enough, I've turned up <coughs> to the cauldron and that's a lot of snow melt coming over here. Um, so windy as well, the camera's gone over once. Uh, so what I might have to do here is I might have to do a super slow shutter speed for the sky and then we might have to do something a little bit faster for this water. The problem is when you've got so much water coming over, if you super slow it down, it just goes milk and you just don't really get any textures and that feeling of motion and movement, which is what I'm looking for really. Okay, I'm gonna to have to be a bit creative here and let's see what we can get. Okay, I'll shout a bit louder because I'm right next to the falls here. Uh, challenging conditions right enough, but I think I've got a good composition. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, I am gonna go super slow which is unusual, it's going to make the water very milky and but it's making the sky very milky as well and that is giving me that like sandwich of really soft 
really harsh the buckle and the crease and then really soft sky as well so it actually working all right so i think i've got a decent composition it's probably going to be a bit wider so i put the wide angle lens on i'm down all the way to 14 mil just to kind of just get it all in but i think i've got a really nice shot so let me talk you through the composition here yeah this cauldron is a really honey pot location it's really nice I'm surprised that I didn't find it until just a couple of years ago which I don't quite know how I missed it living here I've been here 20 years now you'd have thought I'd have seen it wouldn't you uh, but there we go schoolboy era uh, but it is a bit of a honey pot so we've got a few little friends here so I'm not going to spend too much time here I'm going to move over and let these guys get in and get a good composition uh, and that's a good thing when you're doing landscapes in honey pot areas if you be, be a bit kind and just let folks sort of get in and take the turn we're all here to get the great shot so uh, yeah it works really well so and it's nice to see other folks you can have a chat and there's a little bit of a community around here so it's really nice cool okay let's carry on yeah so the cap's gone i've had to put that in the bag that's blown off the glasses have gone because they're just steaming up i can't see a pigging thing um i'll be down to my t-shirt and shorts at this rate it's so windy every now and again there's a bit of light that comes across the buckle and it's but the wind is moving so fast that it just kind of skirts across very quickly so it's, it's almost as difficult as trying to freeze the action with this waterfall it goes across that quick um good okay i'm here now so i'm going to flip you around let me show you what i'm doing here so here's my camera here all set up and as you can see in the distance there there's the athletic moor over here we're coming around that's going down to glen Etive, and there we get crease there and mila vuli the ski center just over the other way here so here's the cauldron drop itself and that's looking pretty good and what, what I've done then is I've got my composition and I'm going to use this drop here as on the left hand side of the shot and then that's going to guide my eye up and then I'm going to kind of frame it a little bit with crease here and as we skirt across down to the buckle there's the buckle there so they're kind of framing the shot a little bit and that's that beautiful sort of leading line to that frame which I'm looking for so I'm really happy with it so I've taken it and actually 30 seconds, because it's so windy, 30 seconds is working perfectly fine. So uh, we've got a 30 second shot. The good thing with 30 seconds as well is the traffic, because the A82 is right here. And we're right, this is a Saturday and it's, it's the week after Easter Saturday, Easter Sunday. So the traffic is quite horrendous. So by putting it 30 seconds, it just vanishes and disappears. So I haven't got hours of cloning out minibuses and camper vans and all that malarkey that's going up the road here cool i think i've got a really nice shot here i've super slowed it down whether it's to your taste or not it just fits that fine art brief which is what i'm looking for and if this shot works here's the image Okay, I'm happy with that, that worked out all right. It might not be to everyone's taste, super slow water, it might be a bit too milky for people, but it's fitting that fine art brief, which is what I'm going for for today. Um, good, okay, I'm happy with that. So what I'm gonna do is gonna walk back over, jump back in the van, and I've got a few more little spots I wanna try out. Um, but first a cup of tea and maybe a cake at the ski center. Okay, well I've had a spot of lunch, sausage roll at the King's house, it turned out in the end. Um, and now I've driven down the Glen again and I'm back at Altner Fay here so I've just parked up at Altner Fay now what I want to do is there's plenty I mean there's world-class locations around this area Lagengarve Cottage and all this area here getting the book on I mean there must be about five or six and I've done plenty of videos I'll pop a link of one of them about the locations around here which is just fantastic but what I've seen was uh, I just I noticed these trees a while ago and I just thought I wonder if there's a burn over there there's a little stream coming over on the left hand side which is off the track a little bit 
and I, I always see the trees when I drive past and I think is there a shot there so I've just gone up to have a look at them there's nothing really there but actually what I'm liking seeing is the way the burn and the orientation of the burn comes down Fern get out the shot uh, leads the eye to the to the buckle and to the lagging off cottage so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to that burn and then just trace it down and see if I can find a nice composition it's very meandering it's sort of winding around a little bit so hopefully I can get one one of the meanders that kind of orientates itself to the mountain and to the lag and guard cottage as well cool <laughs> it's very windy you can see the camera blowing all over the place so but I'm going to head on down let's go and see if we can find a comp Yeah, so I followed that little burn all the way down from the road. I was hoping to get some good shots of the trees, but they just don't work. The composition's just not working. But what has worked is I've come a bit further down and there's another little bit of a drop here, which is working really nice. And that kind of faces the cottage of Lag and Garb, which is really good. So I think I'm gonna wander around this area, see if we get a nice composition that works for me. I've got a squall coming in, so I need to be quick because that rain is on its way uh, but uh, I should be all right and I think there's a, some good comps around here so let me just wander around and see what we get yeah okay I've wandered around this little burn and I've got to this section and this works perfectly I found a really wonderful composition and you know what it's always a joy when you're in the Glen and you find a new composition because uh, you know I know Glencoe so much that it's very rare I find a new location that's works really well and this is definitely a beauty it really is I'm absolutely delighted even though the weather is turning horrendous and we're battling against it okay I'm gonna flip you around and I'm gonna show you the composition so obviously there's the camera here here we are and what I've got is I've got this beautiful um, cascade this good drop of the water down this burn and that's leading the eye over all the way down giving this beautiful leading line and taking you to Lagengarve Cottage and then there's Biakletif Moor and uh, Coriantulloch there with the snow in it so it's that kind of journey from there all the way up to there which works really well so I think it's going to be a really nice shot now what I've done is I've popped on a polarizer and um, because I want to get that contrast again with the white water and the dark water around it and also it allows me to slow it down a little bit and also I put on the six stopper as well and that's given me a nice long 30 second shutter speed and the beauty with this shot is I'm facing into the wind I'm literally facing right into the wind so what's happening is the clouds above me are blowing directly over my head this way and what that does is it gives you a leading line of the clouds in the sky if you really slow it down so what I've got is I've got the waterfall at the bottom and then all the clouds all pointing to one single point which is Lagingarve Cottage in this shot. So I'm so lucky that the wind direction is exactly coming straight towards me and that really helps sometimes if you're in that position where you can see kind of leading lines with the clouds moving over your heads. Anyway, I've focused stack this as well just in case as usual and I'm absolutely delighted with this. What a fantastic shot. Here's the image. Okay, I've just headed up back to the van. <laughs> Absolutely washed out. Can't see a thing out of my glasses, they put me having them on. Anyway, uh, we'll head back. <laughs> so I think what we need to do is get a little bit of shelter here. So I'm gonna actually head down to the bottom end of the glen. The weather did say it was gonna become particularly awful later on, and it's kind of getting that way, I'm afraid. So let's go and get some shelter. I've got an idea of another location further down the glen, um, which should be a bit more sheltered. So let's try one more spot, shall we? Oh, 
Okay, well let's be driven down the glen a bit now and I've come to the bottom and what we're going to do is we're going to try and look back up the glen. And um, where I've come, I've come and parked at Antor here, which is Signal Rock. And the plan is, is I'm going to try and get across, uh, but I want to be on the kind of east side of the A82 of the river here at Clackaig Falls. And normally I'll shoot the falls, the Clackaig side of the uh, of the road, but actually I want to be on this side of it, of the, the River Co this time, just because I know there's a lot of water now, there's obviously a lot of snow melt gone on today, and I'm probably going to get those small cascades coming over, which is what's going to work for me. Again, doing this super slow shutter and kind of fine art sort of photography that we're aiming for. Great, okay, so let's go and head on up and let's see if we can get some good compositions. That's a lot of snow melt, isn't it? Look at this lot coming down here. It is just a mass of water. It's wonderful to come and be here and see this magical falls here. So this is the Clackaig Falls. Um, I'm using the other side of the river shooting this way, but I know that there's so much water over here. The main falls itself is just gonna be too full. But I'm getting this lovely trickly stuff here. So this is gonna slow down lovely. It's a bit dominant in the shot, but I'm gonna try and find a composition that works for me. Okay, I think I've got what is a decent composition. Like I say, I'm ignoring the main falls because it's just gonna to go too milky. Uh, and I'm trying to get that 30 seconds just to get that fine art look. Um, and I'll flip you around. There's a camera here a lot and I'll flip you around. And so what I'm trying to do is I've got this in the foreground here and I've got all this big waterfall and that's balanced out by the mountain which is higher up there and that's the Anakadu up there and that's balancing those two out, okay? Now what I'm about to do is I've obviously put on the, the six stopper again just to get me that slowness um, to keep it nice and fine arty um, but what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take a really fast shot so I've taken one at 250 of a second and the reason I've done that is so I can paste in all the vegetation because the trees are wobbling that much because the wind is so horrendous and I don't want that in the shot really, I want them trees nice and crisp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in the trees from the really fast shot but I'm going to keep the sort of soft sky and keep the soft water and we'll see if this works. Cool, okay, I think I'm there. So if this shot works, here's the image. spectacular weren't it what a lovely image there as well now I hope you liked all those images you've got four at least to choose from so uh, do me a favor go into the comments write whatever you want let me know which ones you like if you think it's too slow you don't like that fine art look then let me know I'm quite happy to listen to your opinions um, and yeah it's been a great morning it really has the weather's battled against me but I don't mind because you've got to be here to get these kind of shots in these conditions and it really is amazing what you can get out of the locations even if the lights flat and the rains on you it's still worth persevering because sometimes you can still get something really spectacular okay well I'm gonna head on back now for a cup of tea but thanks so much for watching it's been a pleasure to have you on board as always do me a favor go down to the bottom and give me a thumbs up it makes a massive difference and if you really like the content Go on down to that subscribe and if you tickle the bell you'll get a notification every time I post. 
I'm kind of posting every two or three weeks now because I'm coming into my busy season. Um, but I'll try and keep you up to date and I'll try and get some new videos out as I can. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.